Good evening, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Band of Barbers podcast. I'm your host, Devon Evans. And first off, I want to wish you guys happy Thanksgiving. If you're listening to it later, still happy Thanksgiving. Um, hope you barbers, if you work today, you made you made a nice piece of money. If you didn't work today, I hope you enjoy time with your family. And also, if, if you did work today, I hope you didn't work all day and you went and spent some time with your family and you, and you enjoyed some family time. Thanksgiving is a good time for gathering together with your family, reminiscing, laughing, joking, getting to see people that you don't see all the time. And it's all around a, a pretty good time, right? You know, comes once a year. But it's 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 a time that's that's great. It's great for us as barbers. Financially, this this period of time between now and New Year's is is typically a great time, but it's also a good time to spend time with your family. And I'm gonna say this and I, I I truly believe this. Even if you are starting out and you're working and, and let's say you're in a shop that may be open on Thanksgiving or you can open your shop on Thanksgiving. If you're trying to reach that next financial goal, financial level, like, listen, a couple of hours in the barbershop, if you don't have any real responsibilities or you aren't going out of town, you'd be surprised the clients that you get on these special holidays that, that may end up being um, good clients and, and, and things of that nature. So have a balance, but please enjoy and spend time with your families. Please, please, please. You know, the older, the elders of your family are getting older. They may not be here much longer. And, and, and don't miss out on an opportunity trying to chase uh, a dollar right now. Right. I said a couple hours, not all day. OK, if if you're going to be in town, if you're going to be in town, if you're going to be out of town, totally different story. But if you're going to be in town, you don't have a lot of responsibilities for for the that for Thanksgiving. You're not cooking. Hey, man, go go spend a couple hours. You'd be surprised what you can build while you're in there. Right. We are. We are barbers. We're independent. We, we're the boss. We control our own schedules, all of those sorts of things. But one of the things that you have to understand in this industry is that you are going to have to make some sacrifices and do some things that are different or against the grain. And it doesn't hurt. It really just does not hurt. But either way, guys, I don't really have a whole lot for you today. I think today I just want to talk about um, balance a little bit. And, and and the balance the balance within the shop and, and the important factors of having the right family support. Okay. Um you're you're going to work long hours behind a chair on your feet. Uh, and initially in the beginning, you may have to sit in the shop all day and get one haircut, two haircuts. It may be something that you have to do, right? It may be something that you have to do, but you need to be consistent and being present and being there at work because sometimes what may end up happening is is you don't realize and I don't think people think about this if you're in a multi-chair shop all right although a client may be going to another barber that client is watching all the barbers around and you're kind of in an interview phase with them so if you're coming, if the, if if the another barber's client and 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 listen, I'm not saying poach the client or steal the client, but hear me out as as I say what I'm about to say. Calm down before you say no. That's his client. Hear me out. Okay. If another client, if if someone else's client is in a chair, 
they're looking out at all the other barbers. They're interviewing you without saying anything to see if maybe, hey, what if my barber is busy? Or what if I'm just a walk-in guy? Who can I, 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 I trust to get in their chair that's going to provide a service that I'm looking for? Okay, that that's that's what's going on. I and I, I will tell you from experience when I was just a client in a shop, I may have gotten the walk-in barber when I came in the shop at the time, but I looked around to see who else was, what else everyone else was doing. How are they cutting? What are their lines look like? Their, their their line of their edge ups. What do their edge ups look like? What do their fades look like? Is it does it look like a good haircut, or is it something that that I wouldn't I I, I don't want? I'm either gonna know that I can trust him if 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 I need to go to him or her, or I know that I can't trust them if I need to go to him or her. As far it, it as far as the service, as far as the way that they they handle and manage their business. You just don't understand. You don't know. These are the things that are happening when a client is sitting in a chair. So it's very important for you to be consistent and being in, in the shop. Being in the shop, when you're building clientele, you need to be in the shop present so people can b- become familiar with you your work and your face, right? Can I trust this guy? I've already put my trust in this guy, but can I trust this guy over here? They need to know that they can trust you. If you want, ever want to get a chance for them to sit in your chair, you need. They need to know they can trust you. Okay, that's that's important. And and, and number two, and and. And talking about the long hours and the long days and things like that, just because it's slow doesn't mean that you run home or 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 things like that. Like now, for you know, for example, like you need to you need to have a a spouse that understands that you may work late some evenings. Yes, your hours may say nine to five, but what if somebody comes in at 450? Are you going to turn them away? And you may have something to do, but if you don't have plans in the evening and you in and, and you are allowed to stay later cuz you may not be allowed to stay later that 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 could be an honest an honest thing. Shop rules may be 5 o'clock we close the door no matter what. But if you're in an environment, we we kind of, you know, are in the, in a different environment. If you're in an environment where it's kind of like, hey man, get your money, get it how you get it, um, do what you need to do, whatever you need to do to be able to make money. Listen, if it's four fifty and a and and a walk in comes in, he's looking to get a haircut. You don't have any prior obligations, right? Grab the walk in, man. Grab the grab the walk in. And if you want him to know, you can do like 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 I do. I I generally have a rule, other than on Fridays, or unless I have a prior obligation. My rule is is that, that I will put my last client in a chair at four thirty. If you aren't in a chair by four thirty, I'm not going to provide a to provide a service if I have something to do. You know, if you come in at, at 450 or whatever, I may, I may, I may pull you in. But what I will say is is say, hey, normally we're done at 430. Like we take our last client at 430 so we can close the doors at 5 p.m. As far as walk-ins, hey, last one 4:30. That's what we will. That's what I will let the client know once I'm in the chair. Once they're in the chair, and the reason that I do that is is I want them to understand I am making an exception for you right now and providing this service. 
But please understand that my business normally functions off of this rule. Now, from now on, just understand if you're going to be a walk-in, you need to be in the shop by 430. If you are not in the shop by 430 and you think you're going to, and, and this is this is me. Now, if this is a, a walk-in guy who's, who's an habitual offender as far as a walk-in, if you are not in in the shop and and or, or have an appointment or anything like that, after four thirty we are no we are no longer taking walk ins. But I tell them I tell them this, and I also explain to them if you want to book an appointment, here's my number, here's my booking information. All right. If you don't think that you're going to be able to make it, if you don't think that, if you want to get in and you're trying to get a special time, please don't hesitate to text me or book an appointment. Because if you book an appointment, then we can make this happen. But I'm not going to play a, I'm not going to play a guessing game to see if you're going to show up today. And let me wait around. For, let me wait around for you. I run a business, okay. And and that's how you communicate with them. Hey, look, I'm I'm gonna be able to get you in today, but in the future, just understand we take our last walk-in clients at at four thirty. And 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 the the client may look around and see other barbers doing you know, people coming in and getting in the chair or anything like that. I reiterate to them and say, these people that are coming in now, that, that, that may be coming in later, they're not walk-ins. They have appointments. They are here for their appointment. So you can make an appointment and you can get on exclusive, exclusively with us and come in later if you need to. But that requires an appointment. It doesn't require. It, it it it's not, it's not allowed for just walk-ins, and some people may say, "Hey, well, you know, that's not really good for business." What you know, you you're losing out on money. I may be, but I'm also not a factory. I'm not a factory. I'm not a machine. I'm a human. I get tired have other responsibilities, anything like that. My business hours are from 9 to 5. People who book after 5 o'clock, people who book at 4.45, people who book with me get exclusive rights to later times. But if I don't have anybody booked and we're done, and, and, and by the time I get to 4.30 and nobody's in my chair, then I go through my cleanup routine. I, I, I will go through my cleanup routine, and I will take that time to clean from 4.30 to 5 o'clock while I don't have a client in the chair because if I've been busy all day or I, you know, I need to do a, a quick deep clean and lift some stuff up, move some stuff around, let me reorganize, reset my station. If these are things, like these are the things I do with my 4.30 to 5 o'clock, I'm not just taking off. I'm, I'm, I'm not just running, but if, if your client wants, wants to be able to do that, oh, that's fine, that's, that's cool, I understand, but book an appointment. Don't think I'm just sitting around waiting. Because I'm not. I'm I'm not and 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 look you're a you're a small business within a business if you are a booth runner in the shop okay you are a small business within a small business if you're a booth runner in the shop what does that mean you control the policies and the way that your business is run there may be a shop standard but you control policies at the end of the day, as long as you're within the what the shop standard may be, if you want to be more stringent, that's up to you. Fall into the realm of whatever your shop standard is. Whatever is, 
is, is, is predictable, but don't, please don't, um, don't throw away those, the, those clients, don't throw away those hours because you're slow or you don't really have a whole lot going on. You don't know what's going to pop through the door. You don't know what's going to come or what, what's going to happen. You don't know any of that stuff. So you're going to need to be consistent while you're building. Build, and the key word in that is building. And in order to build something, you have to have what? You have to have tools. What are your tools to in, 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 in client building? Your tools in client building are you, one, being present in the shop during working hours. That is number one. Okay, number two is marketing and get your information out there, right? Most people, most businesses fail because they're like, nobody's coming. Well, they might come if they knew you were there. But if you're doing no advertising, no marketing, you're not letting people know where you are, what you're doing, or every, anything like that, yeah, your business is going to struggle because nobody knows who you are. You need to be like, uh, it, you need to be like the uh, the famous Cheers theme song. I don't know whoever wrote it, but you need your, your name and your your career as a barber need to be synonymous, right? In your area, if someone thinks barber, they need to think about you. Your name needs to be so correlated with barbering that it's it's just not even like the, you you got to create a cult like following, right? I, I I tell you I I have never seen it since, and I don't think I'll ever see it again. My barber in but I will say this: my barber in middle school, elementary middle school. And some of high school, um, before I really started cutting my own hair, but my barber, my barber back then, he had the strangest. It, it was it was very different business hours, especially for his Saturdays, but it was unbelievable what he was able to do with that, and the way that he built a following was just astonishing. He would have guys literally camping out every Saturday. He opened at 6 a.m. and guys would get there sometimes as early as 4 o'clock in the morning just to be first in line. That's a cult-like following. I said cult-like, not a cult. Just, just so we're clear. Cult-like, not a cult. He had such a following, and, and I don't know if it still happens to this day. I'm not up that early on a Saturday morning to go check and see if he, he still demands that. I do believe it still happens from what I hear, but I'm not up that early. Not for that. Not to go in and, and check on that. But it was just such a cool thing. Like, I mean, 4 o'clock in the morning, people sleep in their cars. People stay, you know, stay, waiting for and he's a one man show just waiting for him get there at at he he get there open the doors 6 a.m. boom 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 he's rolling rolling 6 a.m. rolling okay that this just it's it's different man this is different but that came also through his consistency and what he does and what he's doing. That came through his consistency. <laughs> so. Be consistent in this game, guys. Be present in this game. And, and, and look at ways that you can improve what you, what you are doing. As far as your business. Is, your business and your business acumen is what's going to make or break your career. 
if you can't show up on time, if you don't have a way for clients to book, if clients don't know that you're there, anything like that, and like if they don't have have though that information and able to do those things, you're going to struggle. And you're going to continue to struggle until you figure it out. I'm just going to be honest with you. You don't want to go to work? Hey, just understand that the money that you that you miss, and although it may not be a whole lot of money, but let's let's just say, and I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you an example, and I'm gonna let you guys go. Let's just say you are typically slow Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? You're slow most of those days. But let's, and, and, and so what I've seen some people do is on those days, they just don't come to work. They come to work Friday and Saturday, right? They might make four or $500 on those two days, between those two days, right? Which for some of them, that's okay. But then I want you to think about this. Look at all the money that they left on the table Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday because they have no patience. Because let's say you did um let's say let's just say you cut two clients in the morning, and that's thirty dollars. Two clients in the morning, thirty dollars, thirty dollars. Uh, thirty thirty dollars a piece. So that's that's two. That's sixty dollars in the morning. Let's say you get another. Uh, you get three clients in the evening. They're all thirty dollars services. That's one hundred and fifty dollars right there. And let's just say, you made one hundred and fifty dollars on Tuesday, one hundred and fifty dollars on Wednesday, one hundred and fifty dollars on Thursday. That's an extra that, that's on and and then you still have your Friday and Saturday where you may make five hundred dollars. So now instead of just coming in and only working when it's busy and getting your five hundred dollars and you're like, oh okay, it's cool. But you could almost double your income. Excuse me, sorry guys. You could almost double your income if you came to work and you were patient. You could go from $500 a week to almost $1,000 a week if you just came in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But instead, you're sitting at home doing absolutely nothing, complaining about the shop slow, so I'm not going. (laughs) Well, I'm just saying. There's typically somebody in the shop that's going to work on those days and they're taking that hundred. They're taking that hundred and fifty a day. That that you are that that you don't see coming because you can't be patient enough, or you haven't done enough marketing in order to fill your chair. You know, at the end of the day, for for the barber that says, "Oh, my shop is slow," da 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 da, da so on and so forth. That's more about you than it is the shop itself. You said I wanted to be free. I don't want to be told what to do. But then you then what you don't understand is is now you have the freedom and you don't understand the responsibility. The responsibility of breaking free from the system that you were in as far as a job, the responsibility now becomes on you. Now you have to take responsibility and figure out how to generate income. Don't go into a shop and see that the shop is booming. Or whatever's going on, and you got this barber and that barber, and they're all good, and they're they're making their money, and so on and so forth. See, so like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make that money too. Mm, you can. Is it likely with the work ethic that you have? No. Is it likely with the understanding of, of what you're doing? No. Is it likely that you just put a chair, like you just take yourself to a shop, get behind a chair? 
And then all of a sudden, now that you're in the in a shot behind a chair, all of a sudden, now here comes everybody, and they're gonna they're gonna come sit in your chair because they're gonna come sit in your chair because you 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 now now you here. I'm sorry to tell you this, but most people won't do that. Most people aren't even gonna leave the shop that you were in before they just gonna find somebody else in the shop if you go to another shop just saying humans are creatures of habit and what does that mean for 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 barbering humans are a creature of habit so they have to trust and believe in your habits and you have to trust and believe in their habits it is it is i don't know if, where the report is and I would have to find it. But it's statistical, I, I know, that uh, the average person usually only shops within five, a five to 10 mile radius of their home. So what does that mean? They're getting, cl- they're getting gas close to their home they're they're trying to res- they're trying to get all services that they can close to their close to their home. So let's just say your barber shop that you worked at previously was in their neighborhood. It's not very likely that they're going to go they're going to come they're going to follow you to the next place if you go. Will it happen? Could it happen? Yes, yeah, sure. Is it likely that everybody's coming? No, no. It, you, you. There is a not a, a real. It's not real, right? Not everybody's going to follow you just because you go somewhere else. But you're in another place. You be consistent. Be consistent. Be present. Ask questions. Learn. All right. Be consistent. Be present, ask questions, learn. You'll grow your business. You'll get there. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope because it's, it's, it's one, month one and you ain't got, it, you know, you're, you're, what you making is barely enough to cover. No, nah, don't do that. Run your business. Take responsibility for your business. Take responsibility for your actions within your business. If you don't have time, you can't figure it out, or it stresses you out trying to learn something else, then you need to you need to go and find someone who can do the things that you are not good at, and continue to do the things that you are good at. Period. Best thing is is cutting hair. I'm not I'm not good at. Answering text messages. You can get a virtual assistant. Or you can get an automated text responder that may respond to your to these text messages and and, and see. You got all of these opportunities, man. No better time than the present to do what to do what you're doing. But if you're struggling, find somebody, find somebody that you can ask those questions. If you don't have a, a, a budget to pay what they may be asking, then your next option is, is is to suck it up, learn it, and read. It may take you a little longer than someone who has already been doing doing this for years, right? Just like it, uh, and, and let's look at it in this correlation. Like it may be harder. Um. Oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Lost my train of thought. Either way, either way, guys, listen, man, uh, I'm going to say this. I apologize. It wasn't, uh, I will say this, it wasn't that revolutionary, the thought that I had, obviously, because I didn't remember it. But if I remember the next time we get on here, maybe we'll talk about it. But guys, listen. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you had a very happy Thanksgiving. Let's get back to work tomorrow. 
let's do what we got to do. Uh, let's take care of the band. If you like this podcast, please like, comment, share, subscribe so we can grow the tribe. It's been a wonderful evening. Um, still late, or it's getting a little late. If you're still with your family, please enjoy the time. If you've left already and you're at home, like myself, please reminisce in it. Well, it, it, enjoy the time that you did have. Get you some good sleep because, listen, this is like holiday rush season for UPS in a barbershop. It's going to happen. And it's a, it's a pretty consistent time frame coming up here um, with everything that's going on. So if you're struggling trying to make a dollar, trying to make ends meet, now's the time that your butt get in the shop. Stop throwing away money because it's not as consistent as you want it to be. Stop it. Stop. You want the consistency, take responsibility for what you need to to create the consistency. Figure out what you're missing. Figure out what needs to be changed, what needs to be different. Figure it all out. All right? Guys, I hope you have a good night. We'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in.